Just what the hell is Azeroth? She's clearly more than a titan, more than just a planet. The lore of recent years keeps on ratcheting up her power, up and up and up and up. She gets more and more important. It even seems now that she could be the single most powerful thing in the entire Warcraft setting, which makes you confused. Now, the seeds of this lore were planted in Legion, when Magni took his position as the Speaker of Azeroth. Suddenly, our planet had a personality, and it had a way to interact with us. Then, the wound inflicted by Sargar showed us, for the first time, what Azeroth's blood looked like. And this blood's kind of important. Later, then, we discover the full extent of the Titan machinery on the planet. There was more than even the Titan Keepers we knew, knew about. Whether it's to nurture her or control her, do both, we're unsure, but there's a hell of a lot of tech in our planet. That same storyline has been playing out in the Shadowlands. Remember the heart of Azeroth interacting with a First One's Waystone. What gives there? That's a thing in the Maw. Right through to Alpharim's mind-bending fractal nonsense discoveries, and then all the madness of patch 9.2. Azeroth has been at the core of our story all of the while. Obviously, it's where the story takes place, but there's another dimension to her. It's one that's been under our noses the whole time. And speaking of time, it's time that you checked out GlassesUSA.com, today's sponsor. Tiredness. Headaches. Not only is that the usual experience of in-person glasses buying, in my experience, it's also what I felt recently. Because my prescription has changed and my eyes hurt. So, it's time for new glasses, which GlassesUSA.com makes extremely easy and affordable by cutting out the middleman, offering you prescription glasses up to 70% off, with lots of options for the likes of a blue light coating if you'd like it. So click my link down below, you'll get a great offer with free shipping. Now this time around, I wanted to try something a little bit different, and with the aid of their incredibly useful virtual mirror feature, time to talk about my four pairs. So, first up, I've got the brown frames. Yeah, brown frames. Basically, I just wanted to mix things up a bit, you know, mix and match different sorts of clothes, all that stuff. Then, I've got these absolute champions. These are the rimless ones, the wee bit of a blue light filter too. These, I think, are absolutely perfect for work. Then, for my, uh, for my other ones, I've got my black full frames, and these are just a lovely, just that nice, firm, solid build, and uh, these more sort of gunmetal grey half uh, rim ones as well, which, uh, I mean, hey, fantastic. And what I love here is I've got all my basics covered, I've got room to mix and match, and most importantly for my experience of all this, quick, easy, affordable, and with a massive, massive range, which just makes it easy. So doing your glasses digitally with GlassesUSA.com is the easy way to do it. And even if you forget your prescription, they actually have a scanner app for your phone that scans your glasses and tells you your prescription. It's that handy, so check out my link below. Know that you're safe with their 100% money back guarantee. And a big thank you to GlassesUSA.com for sponsoring the channel and supporting this content. So let's go. With countless invasions from many different cosmic forces, it's clear that Azeroth really is the center of everything. One that came pretty close, or at least close in a very obvious way, was Sargaris, who stabbed the planet, and from that wound, poured Azerite. And this is, of course, when we all went to work speculating on what all this could mean. Of course, we knew that a titan's energy was arcane, Chronicle told us that, so you look at Azerite, you see the blue, you kind of think, ah, yeah, arcane, makes sense. What about the gold then? Is it life? Is it light? What is it? Why is Azeroth blue and gold? Then Shadowlands came out, and speculation happens. Some even thinking that the blue was death. Now, what's the point in all this nonsense, though? Why am I sitting here talking to you about colors of a planet's blood in a game? Well, it's to illustrate that, for a very long time, since yogg saron and probably before, the color of cosmic blood has been something that, lore-wise, has been important. Something that we've been looking at. Indeed, with all of the recent magics, even the color, the feel of magic, that's been something to scrutinize. It's what we did with death magic in BFA. 
This sort of thing tells us something fundamental. In this case, something fundamental about who is bleeding it. So, Lazarite. It was like nothing we had seen before. It shimmered, it shifted, it never settled. Now, time to try to make sense of this. Here is the new raid in the Eternity's End patch. Here we see Zoval. He is standing in front of a pillar of energy. Energy that's rather unmistakably like Azerite. Now, if you look at the effects in isolation, it's a lot more clear. The deeper into the raid you go, and the closer you get to the machinery of, of general creation, the more vibrant and immediate this Azerite stuff gets, the more you notice it. It clearly shows it as the lifeblood that is powering the place, the energy that powers an installation of the first ones, it's remarkably like Azerite. So what the hell does this sort of thing mean for Azeroth herself? Azeroth very much seems like the center of the universe, and the theory around the color here would suggest that it's, well, the same energy powering Zareth Mortis that is also what's bleeding from Azeroth. Of course, maybe whatever we see in Zareth Mortis literally somehow comes from Azeroth. There's a very definite tie, though. But there is a lot more to go on. Zareth Mortis is an engine of creation. It obviously can literally rewrite or regenerate the laws of the cosmos. That's why Zoval needs it. How anima is generated, how it's used, the boundaries between the forces, the setup of the forces, this whole way that the first ones have seemingly ordered everything, well, it seems like that's the sort of thing that the sepulchre of the first ones, this new raid, what its technology is able to control, and it seems like this is all powered by the same stuff that you get from Azeroth. And that's pretty major. But it gets deeper. In the Eyes of the Earth Mother short story, the Earth Mother, who is ex I mean, who is Azeroth, basically, presses her children into her eyes. From her eyes, she teaches them how to create seasons, change the nature of the world, and curate it so that it can grow. What we can learn from this short story, I think, is rather clear. Now, it's obviously distorted through years and years, thousands of years of retelling, but I think this could be a story about creation. Creation via First One's technology, obviously filtered through Torin mythology. Yeah, I think it's kind of the WoW team getting a little bit ancient aliens on us. But I think it is very interesting that we're seeing all of this creation stuff, and when we go into Zareth Mortis, we see the same power source as Azeroth's blood. So, pretty big, and it gives us a lot to think about. So, in the Cartel Al incident reports, Al Farin, who's this crazy researcher guy, has this one distinction about the six cosmic forces that he repeats. Talking about the forces, Al Farin writes, but, as of late, I have settled on six, possibly seven, but the last might be an artifact of the geometry, a fractal. He then later states this, in balance, possibly, but that might be wrong. If six equal one, then what is the other? The one outside the pattern. Who is the one outside the pattern? Well, the Earth Mother story, in that, it is Azeroth, who basically creates the terms of existence. You could kind of see it. Now then, Alpharim talks about a force needing to basically bring the six together to create the cosmos that we know today. Could this be implying that Azeroth is that force that brought it all together? A sort of central nexus. Reality is at the very center of both of the cosmological charts that we have. And to the most recent one, from the broker perspective, it is Azeroth sitting in the middle of that great cycle. It does make you wonder, is Azeroth sort of the glue that binds the material plane together? 
And is it the case that the material plane existing is in fact some sort of spontaneous result of whatever Azeroth does with the six cosmic forces? What would happen if we went to the Zareth installations in the other planes of the cosmic forces, and just like with Zareth Mortis, we see that Azerite looking energy powering them? If we were to see that, then <laughs> I think we could really start to say some of this with extreme confidence. This all gives us a lot to think about, and if you've seen my recent video on the Cosmic War, you may even believe, as I sort of entertained, that Order won that whole war a long time ago, and that that's why our planet is a bit more familiar with uh, the Titans and Order than any other cosmic force. Indeed, in that video, I look around the whole of the cosmos, even the plane of death, and even within death, aside from all the death bits, what do you see? Obviously, Order. Does make you think that all these places were ordered, and that somehow Azeroth is like the final piece to the puzzle. So, suppose Azeroth is key to the first one's design, which it certainly seems to be. What were the Titans actually doing then, when they were ordering the planet of Azeroth, which is one of the most old foundational bits of the Warcraft lore? You know, Kazgaroth shaping the world and all of that. Well, the Titans are the only pantheon of any cosmic force that we've seen in the material realm. The Naru are seemingly not the pantheon of light. The Void Lords are obviously stuck outside of reality. Um, disorder? Well, it was led by a Titan, and it's not like we've seen a pantheon of demon lords. That's also something, as I said, is true for light, and it's also true for life. And then when you look at the Death Pantheon, they very much do seem stuck in their realm of the Shadowlands. So, why is it that these Titans can freely manifest within the Material Plane, even when Blizzard have pretty much already confirmed that there is a Titan home plane, like a home plane, like a, what we see in the Shadowlands, but over in the realms of order? So why are there Material Plane Titans? All quite weird, isn't it? Well, in the Cartel Al Incident Reports, the fourth part, Alfarim speculated that each force actually does have its own pantheon. These pantheons arose from particular first ones. He then calls into question the idea that the material realm was created to feed anima to the Shadowlands, and he believes that it is a nexus at which all forces interact. And to be honest with you, that is my understanding of it as well. I think that whenever the First Ones ordered all of these different, uh, very raw, primordial cosmic forces with their Zareth installations, I think they pretty much somehow, you know, turned on the on switch. And I think the flicking on of the on switch is probably the clash of shadow and light that is described as the creation myth in Chronicle Volume 1. So yes, the material plane is basically the nexus where all of the forces interact. And if that is the case, then the Titans shouldn't necessarily have more of a right to manifest themselves than beings from any other pantheon. So that makes it rather confusing. I sort of wonder then, what is what if the whole point of a world soul is to be a nexus point from which any force can manifest, but maybe it's just that the Titans were the ones that did? It's kind of hard to know, and this is where we really start to brush up against the edges of the knowable lore. I mean, certainly something like that would explain why seemingly everyone has a grand plan for an awakened Azeroth. Of course, why did everybody want her? Well, maybe if they had her, they'd get a player in the game, one of their own in the material plane, or maybe if Azeroth is some sort of central anchor point, sort of central nexus of the entire material plane, then they basically just get access to what? Some total of all power in the universe or something? We could probably then, if we really wanted to, connect a few things back here to Argus as well. Argus was a nascent world soul, not ever fully born. Of course, there's two variants that we see. There's the sort of red and demonic one, and then there's the blue and deathly one. You know, maybe that kind of represents the war in the shadows that Sargaris and Zoval were having over the destiny of his soul. Sargaris was clearly trying to create a ally, well, a 
tool in Argus, but that never really explained the death stuff. That wasn't so much Sargaris's jam. Not at least until we get into the Shadowlands and then, of course, discover that Zovel has actually been subtly manipulating Sargaris, uh, well, pretty much the whole while. This could have been Zovel's attempt to spawn a de facto Shadowlands Eternal, uh, well, basically, you know, one of those beings, but, you know, of death, in the material plane. Hard to know. Although it also could be that the destruction of Argus yielded something to Zoval, after all, we did have that line about the victory that went unnoticed. Expanding this right out then, we've got our six Zareth installations as we covered in that other video, but if Azeroth is important to reality itself, and could potentially host one of these big first ones techie things, then could Azeroth basically be the point at which all the powers of the first ones meet? Could she then host one of the most powerful engines of creation, or, you know, extremely key in the whole great cycle, I would say almost certainly. All of this means that Azeroth cannot simply just be a titan anymore. When we go and we try to answer the question of what is Azeroth, back in the day it used to be Azeroth as a planet. Then it evolved, it turned into Azeroth is a titan, there's a world soul inside her, and actually, she's the final titan, the most powerful one. And now, not even that is enough, because it seems like Azeroth could basically be the very center of reality itself, at least insofar as any being in this setting would be concerned. It seems that if you take out Azeroth, all bats are off. That could be it for reality. I think, however, that today we've taken our first real step into finding out what Azeroth is. But right now, well, it is basically impossible to know exactly what. But I have a, few th I have a thought to leave you with. Data mining from the Oracle in 9.2. It's a big trove of speculation that we'll be picking apart over the coming weeks and months, but there seems to be a reference to Azeroth in that data mining. Before listing the other Zareth installations, as we've talked about a good bit, the Oracle says, Her dreams sing beneath the surface. Quiet now, but her voice will awaken the others. Mortis, Lumen, Ordos, Vitae, Umbra, Tumult. So now we're in this situation where things are never going to be the same, no matter what happens in Eternity's End. Either the Jailer takes the soul of our world and rewrites the cosmos to suit him, which almost certainly will not happen, or something goes on. Could Azeroth actually wake up the other Zareth installations? So then, Azeroth, I mean, pff, what is she? It's all getting a bit loopy, isn't it? It'll be very interesting to see how things actually end. I mean, with all this stuff we're, we're thinking about with Azeroth today, I mean, what's that raid and cinematic going to, going to do? I mean, if it's anything like the Legion one, it's going to be pretty bonkers. So, check out ClassesUSA.com, link down below for, uh, you know, for, for the great deal. Um, if you're uh, in the market for some new glasses and you want it nice and easy, thanks to them for supporting this content. And with that, I'll take my leave. Have a wonderful day.